in this video, what I'm going to be doing is demonstrating the R1, R2 test and various few methods that we can uh, use to actually conduct that test. So I'm going to be using a few adapters and then using the uh, the actual test leads and the taking the socket face off and testing behind. Just to give you an idea of an overview of what can be done and uh, how simple this test can be made if you've got the right equipment. So let's make a start here. You can see what I'm doing now is we've got a standard setup, uh, an old fashioned plastic board, main switch, and we're using an RCBO. So as you can see, it's actually not connected to any mains. It's just for pure uh, testing purposes, but I've got a couple of sockets here and a radial sit setup, radial circuit that is. So I'm gonna get into it and take the cover off and then we'll make a start. And one of the simplest things that you can do to help make life easy is just get all your stuff prepped ready before you start taking the test. It's important to have everything handy. So here's the board, as the RCBO, and for, just for clarity, we've already got the, the Earth uh, CPC, or the live and line conductors, out and ready to go, just to speed things up a little bit idea of the R1 R2 test is to test at every single point and that's what BS7671 indicates. So we've got a socket and C plug adapter and the socket and C plug adapter you can use in co combination with these little uh, fly leads that I've got here, little banana plug leads and uh, it's very easy to use these. Um, you can do multiple configurations. And I've also made this little thing up here, which is uh, a plug top with a standard 13 amp fuse in it. And obviously I've got a label on and uh, I've put a link between the earth and the live. So you've got to be really careful with this thing. Uh, it would be the idea if you're making one of these, make it red uh, and keep it separate to any of your other test equipment. Just make sure you don't plug it in, leave it in and switch the power on. Really handy bit of kit. So traditionally you can put a link from the buzz bar at the top into the top of the live. Um, I don't like doing that, I'll be honest with you, um, because if you've got any parallel paths, it'll still show earth continuity all the way through. So when, today we're using the Mega 1711 tester, and we're gonna set it up on continuity test, which is the orange indicator that you can see there. Leads are plugged into the back end to this arrangement, as you can see. So live is the red, green, is the uh, earth wire and today we're using the crocodile clips just a handy tip when you're not using them put them on your strap it keeps them out of the way stops them tangling up keeps them nice and handy make sure the leads are in as well and they're steady and then if any moving about shaking around you've just got to keep checking that them leads don't pull out so the first thing to do is to perform a nulling on the actual tester so we set this up and we use the orange symbol there, which is continuity. So what we're going to do first of all is take these crocodile clips, bottom to bottom, it's really important this guys, bottom to bottom, and you can then null the leads. I always give them a little squeeze. If you press and hold the test button, you can see the resistance is 0 0.06. Pressing the test button once will actually null the leads out. And by nulling, we mean it takes the resistance of the leads and subtracts it from the measurement. So you get a more accurate measurement. Now, what I'm going to show you first is the, the simplest form of R1, R2 measurement here. And I've just put my crocodile clips on the end. And I like to do that, like I said, take them out of the board. There's no poss possible parallel paths. So I'm going to use this adapter plug. So I plug it into the first socket. Because BS7671 says we've got to test at every single point. And I will actually get a reading at the first socket. And I go along to the next one. And I'll get a reading. And the next one. And you get a reading. And the furthest point away. So if that was four single sockets... Uh, I would get a, a reading at each one. And it's the highest reading that we're looking for. And all that's doing is putting a link in between each one. And it's displaying a value. So as I'm going to show you here on the screen in a moment. The highest reading that we've got there is 0 0.74 ohms. And the mega machines will all hold and retain the readings of the highest value. 
The previous method is probably the preferred method that I use, um, especially on new circuits that has been installed. This particular method is a little bit more long-winded, but a bit more traditional in its approach, and it's using a connector block. So obviously you'd select a connector block depending on the size of the cable that you're using, but I've just got a 15 amp connector. Put it on the end of the earth wire in the board, or you can indeed do it the reverse way around. You can put it in a socket, or you can use the link method from the earth bar to the uh, line conductor in the top of the fuse, but obviously I've described that before. So there we go, we've got the connection in, and we're ready to test. So what it's done now, it's completed a circuit from the live to the earth, and we're gonna go straight into the end point, but obviously we would have tested all the way along the circuit. So depending on how many sockets you've got, if you've got 10 sockets, 20 sockets, it doesn't matter, it's the same principle for both. And I've gone to the, the back of the socket this time. One of the advantages of doing this is that if you've got an old socket face, sometimes you can get a higher resistance reading. And on this one, it's 0 0.67. So as you can see, it's, uh, it's slightly less than before and it's a little bit more accurate because it's taken into account the uh, the wear and tear of the socket face and obviously the resistance of the adapter as well. The third option available to us in this demonstration is using this socket and C adapter with a banana plug lead. And what I'm doing here is just configuring it from the, the earth to the live, putting a little link wire in. And it's important when you get an arrangement like this that you actually null that out as part of your nulling procedure. Otherwise, it'll take the resistance of that lead in. So as we can see, it's just a simple case. It's um, press the test button and it takes the resistance away and we're good to go. So I'm just going to plug it into the end socket because I think you get the idea by now. And obviously, I'm just going to take the two end points, the earth and the live. And we're going to get a reading display and it should be not 0.7374, which it is. It proves that we've done everything correctly. And just for clarity, I'll just move it along. It's still the same reading because it's the same socket. In a double socket, normally it won't make any difference whether you use left or right. Although wear and tear inside the socket will show a bit of a difference. You can also, with this, give you the flexibility to change it over to the, the neutral. And there I'm showing no display, no reading because we haven't got continuity. So I'll take the, uh, the green lead off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace it with the actual neutral conductor. I'm just going to swap it over onto the neutral. And this time uh, I've checked my neutral to earth as well and it's not 0.73. So that's just check continuity and everything is, uh, is okay. It's not a requirement to check the neutral, but it's always a good idea to do so. Many thanks for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy it. Uh, if you did, please hit the subscribe button and don't forget to like the video.